you know, the hip action in your golf swing can really make or break you. A good, efficient hip action will leave you with effortless power, while a poor hip action will leave you struggling to find power and feeling like you need more effort. A good hip action will also make you super accurate, while a bad hip action will make you super crooked and rarely able to find the fairway. So right after this, let's talk about what good hip action is. Don't go away. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey for more power, more accuracy, and hip action, or correct hip action, correct is, a, is too black and white of a term, but let's call it um, efficient hip action, is going to give you both power and accuracy, but there's so many golfers out there that struggle because their hip action is far from efficient. It's making them crooked and it's making them hit shorter shots as well, not as powerful. And so their hip action is effectively not making golf very fun. So let's take a look, deeper look into um, what a very efficient hip action looks like. So if you've been watching my channel, you know that I'm a big proponent or a big advocate of the Mike Austin uh, golf swing. Uh, Mike Austin, I, I learned from uh, in person back in the early 90s after he had been paralyzed from a stroke. Um, I really liked the fluidity and the built-in power of this swing action that he kind of conceived of. Um, his number one pupil, his most uh, famous pupil, his name was Mike Dunaway. He was a long drive pioneer, uh, creator of the 350 Club, um, kind of got the long drive tour going. A lot of the people that became famous in long drive were on the original 350 team. And Mike was a phenomenal athlete, there's no doubt about it. But there were some things that he said in later on videos that more centered around him and not Mike Austin, um, where Dunaway was more directing the action, doing most of the talking. Well, unfortunately, he said a lot of things that have left a lot of Austin students very bewildered. But before we get into that, let's talk just a little bit about the Mike Austin method of moving the hips, because it is a little bit different than maybe anything that you've ever um, heard or, or read about before. What Mike advocated was a compound action of the hips, meaning that we needed to get a, a proportionately correct amount of tilt and turn in both directions of our pivot. So he would add a lateral shift of the, the spine and the hips this way in order to create a tilt in the spine this way. Also by retracting the right kneecap and flexing the left kneecap in towards the ball, see we could create a tall right side and a shortening left side that would be allowed to swing almost like uh, the hinges of the door and the doorknob is allowed to swing down and around the hinges as the, the door frame, uh, you, you take the door and you post it into the door frame and then you just simply Un, uh, wind the door, close it, open it, depending on which direction you're coming from. And then we're going to go the opposite way on the downswing. We're going to create an equal and opposite secondary tilt of the spine with a strong lateral shift target words of the hips this way. And we're unwinding around this tilted axis. So this is essentially what Mike Austin was talking about when he was describing his compound pivot or compound action. This is something that's very new to you. You don't have to do this to be a good golfer. I like it because several reasons, which I've talked about in other videos, it does this help establish the plane a little bit easier, gives you more power, a um, lot of good things. So let's get back to Mike Dunaway again. Uh, 
Mike Dunaway in the later videos with Mike Austin and by himself unfortunately described the pivot as a 4 to 10 pivot. Now what happens in a golf swing we stand when we when we take our stance we're on what we call a two foot balance and so the 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 way my body works is just imagine the four o'clock position and the ten o'clock position. My spine or the lower part of it actually moves to the right and to the left, but it doesn't go from three to nine, that would be a sway. What we do is we go from, as I, as I shift my weight from a two foot balance to a one foot balance, I go to what we call the four o'clock position. My spine goes to four o'clock, boom, and that allows my right leg to be set in a real strong position and also helps me maintain the elevation of my chin. Now, as I go to four, now what happens on the, on the downswing is a couple things. This allows you to shift and turn. Now, when I come back to the ball, the lower part of the bottom of my spine works to 10 o'clock. See, I work from four on the backswing to 10 on the through swing. This allows my center of gravity to be moving the weight that my weight shifts. Now, as I shift my weight to that 10 o'clock position, at impact, I want my shoulders See, the lower part's going to that 10 o'clock position, but I want my shoulders at what we call the 1 7 position. So we go from 4 to 10, but my shoulders at impact, see, to hit it off the side, we want it at that 1 7. Real simple little thing to practice, but what that is, is that's a compound pivot. That's a shift and a turn. And I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to boil down something that Mike Austin could make so complicated by using names of every muscle and every joint action. And Dunaway, just trying to boil it down in something that he could easily digest, described the pivot or the weight shift as something as we'd call it, he called it four to 10. So just shift the weight to four and you see I've got this alignment stick on the ground here at four o'clock. So this is three o'clock. 12 o'clock is out towards the ball for me. Six o'clock is behind me. You've, you may have seen this clock before in some of these videos. So if I just shift my weight to four o'clock and then I shift my weight to 10 o'clock, which would be this line out here like that. So he does say right hip to four o'clock, right hip to 10 o'clock. But then he also backs up and he says, shift the weight to four o'clock, shift the weight to 10 o'clock. He's just trying to make it very concise. Unfortunately, the four to 10 action has screwed up more Austin students than maybe anything else. They come to me all the time. They're saying, look, I'm trying to do the Austin swing, but something's going wrong. I don't know what it is. Can you please help? And more often than not, it's that they've watched the Dunaway instruction rather than watching what Austin was doing throughout his career. And I want to tell you a better way of doing things that's going to replace the 4 to 10. I want you to throw the idea of 4 to 10 out of your vocabulary completely. Never watch that video again because the description is really going to mess your game up. And hip action is so crucial to hitting long and straight. So. The problem with going to four o'clock for most people, I guess on paper it would be a good idea. Unfortunately, most people overdo four o'clock. Initially they go four o'clock, but then when they wind up, they end up more at like five o'clock. So they end up overdoing the turn of the pivot this way. And they overturn and they under tilt. So that's a problem. Now you're kind of off the trolley here and it's going to be a lot more difficult to get back on it on the downswing. And then what's even worse is the idea or the phrase of shifting the weight to 10 o'clock this way just brings us into early extension. Um, he also in, in, in conjunction with that talked about the, the hands coming out to the flight line. Well I'm telling you if you swing the club this way as you think Mike Austin or Mike Dunaway was professing, you are never going to hit the ball straight consistently. You will spend the rest of your life chasing crooked shots, both right and left. So it's exasperating, it's very frustrating that people keep pushing the four to 10 idea. Instead, I've set up 
some sticks that are going to help us with a different concept. Here I have my yellow stick as the target line going out just to the right, over the right side of this tree out here in the middle of the fairway. I've got my four o'clock stick and I've got an eight o'clock stick here that's going to set up our arc. We want everything working on an arc. This is not an arc. That's driving your weight linearly in the wrong direction. That's never going to work. Now, for those of you who aren't Austin swingers, it's okay. This applies to you as well because a lot of golfers out there early extend and they push their hips into the ball and they stand up. I talk about it in a lot of videos I do on this channel. To fix this, a simple idea could be instead right hip to four o'clock, left hip to eight o'clock. See what that's going to do for me, I know that I want the club moving in an arc four o'clock and then around to eight o'clock on the exit. So right here in the impact zone, certainly the four o'clock to eight o'clock idea causes the club head to swing around the arc. Well, the club head is just simply following the rest of our body. Our arms are like spaghetti noodles, just responding while the body is shifting and turning. We want, therefore, we want our hips to also be swinging on the, eight, uh, the four o'clock and then the eight o'clock arc. So that would look more like this, four o'clock pivot and left hip and clubbed eight o'clock. And what that does is it keeps my rear end back and gets me turning open and getting the club to exit to the left rather than what's gonna happen if you are shifting your weight to the right of nine o'clock. Uh, if you're a baseball fan and you miss baseball, let's call the yellow stick the path through the pitcher to second base. If your weight shifts right of second base towards right field, you're going to have a very hard time with creating easy distance and you're going to have a really hard time squaring the club face. So whether you're an Austin disciple or not, we've got to get the left hip exiting to eight o'clock. So all I'm thinking here is right hip to four, left hip to eight. And you see what that's doing for me, allowing me to turn and get the club exiting left. More turn will be more power. Club exiting left will enable you to bring the club face through the ball more square to the arc, like Mike professed. Now, since a lot of people go so far as to overdo the four o'clock right hip, they go weight shift to four and they tend to overdo it when they turn to the top. And now I've got too much hip turn and not enough tilt. So what I would do, the prescription I would give you would be, if you're in that, I would say right hip to 330 or even almost to three this way right hip to 330 will not get too much turn and not enough tilt to give you a blend of more tilt and less turn to offset the overdue. Now from here it becomes really easy to shift my left hip down the eight o'clock line here. Now let's look at it with a chair or a wall behind us and for you non-Austin students, for everybody really, you'll see what the rear end and the hips are doing relative to the wall behind me. I know a lot of people, you've seen videos and you've maybe seen other instructors talk about squatting as you start down the swing because you want all the ground reaction forces and everything. So you'd be doing something like squat and squat. So you're sitting your butt back. I'm telling you that that approach is going to be much more difficult to learn and you may never really get it down. Um, it's a really difficult motion to learn if you don't naturally do it in your swing. Some people just do. 
but learning this is going to take forever. Instead, you can squat in essence by instead driving your weight down the 8 o'clock line. So here I am, butt on the wall. Here's my pivot of my weight to 4 o'clock. The club is arcing towards the 4 o'clock line at this point. My right butt cheek is touching the wall. My left butt cheek is starting to orbit down and around the posted right. Now, instead of moving to 10 o'clock, this is what 10 o'clock would look like. There's me shifting my weight towards 10 o'clock. You see that I've moved well off the wall here and my pelvis has come underneath me to where I now have to stand up to retain balance. Well, there's no way comfortably you're going to be able to swing the club down the eight o'clock line where it needs to exit. It would be a completely independent arm move that would almost be steep and over the top with only the arms to make up for the fact that the body is going so much uh, into right field. So if we're going to get a squat look, watch how automatic this is. Here's my 4 o'clock shift. Now I'm going to do a 8 o'clock shift. Just so sending my weight down the 8 o'clock line like it's a vector. Just sending my hip to 8 o'clock. Let's try it again. 4 o'clock, right hip. 8 o'clock left hip, following the handle and the club face, the hips are all moving on the same parallel arc. One more time, right hip, what I feel is 3.30, 8 o'clock, my left hip is now going to come back to the wall, step down onto my heel, I now have my squat look, continue to intersect the left side of the chair as I shift my hips to 8 o'clock, turn my body and allow the handle of the club and the club head to all move down the 8 o'clock line. Let me hit a couple for you. You can see this 8 to 4 in action, not eight, 4 to 10, but 4 to 8. got drilled down the middle that time and when I hit that thing I felt no recovering with my wrist this way I felt like as I came this way I could just flap neutrally and powerfully freely with the hands because the club face was already square to the arc I didn't have to play with it to get it square at the ball so again that's four o'clock 8 o'clock. Everything moves in an arc, starting with the hips and the weight shift. The hip action is 4 o'clock, or in some cases out there, 3.30. Immediately, left hip, there's 8 o'clock, driving down the 8 o'clock line, which will intersect with the edge of this chair and slightly lift it with the left butt cheek. When you're halfway down, it's going to look as if you're performing a little bit of a squat move, even though you have no consciousness of doing that. So hey, I hope this new concept catches on and works for you. I like four to eight so much better than the four to 10 idea. Um, let me know in the comments below, give this a try. Let me know how it works for you. And don't forget, I've got a lot of great articles on the swings of both Mike Austin and Mike Dunaway. And whether you're not, you're going to follow the compound pivot or the Mike Austin style completely. This will still work for you really well. This four to eight concept is still universally a very good way to move the hip. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks to Golf Development Complex for this beautiful scenery. Thanks to Paul and Diane. You guys are the best. 
And uh, if I don't see you in the next video, I hope I see you longer and straighter down the fairways.